Dr. Tuttle, tell me, um, you mentioned radioactive iodine before, and it sounds like this kind of heat-seeking missile is a perfect treatment or therapy, but not everyone gets or should get radioactive iodine. Tell me a little bit about that. It is a very, very good treatment for people that need it. Um, but what we do is if we think the surgery, and as Dr. Shah was laughing, as much as it kills me to say, thyroid cancer is a surgical disease. And that most people Keep it that, in mind. <laughs> most people that are cured, he cured, and then I take the credit for the next 20 years. So if we think the surgery has cured you, and there's a very low chance there's any thyroid cancer left over, there's no reason to do anything else, radioactive iodine, chemo, anything. But if we think based on the size of the tumor or what he found in the operating room or the number of lymph nodes or a lot of those characteristics that make me worry that there's still some microscopic thyroid cancer in the neck or someplace else, then those are patients that we would select to use the radioactive iodine for. Would those be patients also perhaps that their thyroglobulin level starts to go up or is still there even after surgery? Very much so. So radioactive iodine is a treatment that we can actually use multiple times if we need to. So if we decide not to use it at first and the cancer marker starts going up a few years later, we can change our mind. Or if I use it once and it works good but not hardly enough, I can come back in six months or a year and use it again. So we do have the opportunity of using it over and over in the, in the few folks that really need it. In general, thyroid cancer or it, if after surgery there is something still present, in general, is it in the area of the thyroid or is, it, or is thyroid cancer one of those that go, tends to metastasize to distant sites? It tends to stay in the neck far and away the majority of time. So if we have persistent disease left over or if the thyroid cancer recurs or we find it back, it's in the neck about 90 or 95 percent of the time often in these little small lymph nodes in the neck that Lucy finds on the ultrasound for us. So maybe 5% of the time it leaves the neck and goes someplace else. So the majority of the time, part of the reason we do a lot of follow-up with ultrasound is that's where, if we're going to find anything, that's where we'll find it, little lymph nodes up in the neck. 